Hey guys, welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and this time I'm joined by Derek Banner and John Cartwright to discuss a kind of crazy sounding upcoming event Nintendo has just announced. So let's get started. Alright guys, so as you know, Nintendo has just made a, an announcement a little bit peculiar by even their standards, where they said that uh, they announced it on, on their social media platforms to tune in to discover a new interactive experience for Nintendo Switch that's specially crafted for kids and those who are kids at heart. Uh, this will be airing a little bit later today, just a few hours from now. And yeah, I wanted to get together to talk about this because I'm trying to figure out what this could be. Um, <laughs> because this is they've never done anything quite like this before where um, they specifically announce what kind of audience it's for. This one is for kids and those who are kids at heart. Um, and apparently too, I believe on their Dutch channel, the way they worded it is it's for both the young and old. So that has a little bit slightly of a different annotation to it. So I'm not quite sure where this lands. So <laughs> let's just get to it. Uh, what do you guys think of this announcement? Like, what are you kind of expecting going into this? This is Nintendo setting expectations immediately. If they just announce like, hey, we got something coming out at later today, speculation is going to run rampant. It already kind of is. But with this, it's like, no, this is for kids. This is specifically for kids, but older some older fans might enjoy it as well. That's how I'm interpreting it, and they need to do that because, well, you know how the internet can get. They were t before the Direct Mini was announced. Like, oh, this could be this, it could be all this, it could be showing this. Nintendo knows they need to set expectations, and they're not going to troll us like they did with the burning Chibi Robo this time around. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And um, the thing is, is this could have been in that mini direct, but I think they're trying to distance themselves from it because uh, a lot of the contents in that was geared towards, you know, the the core gamer like Donkey Kong and Dark Souls. So to me, this is saying this this announcement is going to be something completely different to that. Yeah, that is definitely the takeaway from this. Um, when they're specifically calling out younger audiences, I think that's very clearly telling. I mean, basically, what I'm getting from this is it's going to upset a lot of. <laughs> Nintendo fans because uh, it's not made for them like as far as we can tell it's not going to be made for the typical like for the people listening right now it's not going to be for you probably so <laughs> prepare for that um, yeah this is very different from Nintendo um, and even though they are they are saying it's suitable for both the young and young at heart I am really leaning toward that, that younger portion of that statement I think this is going to be aimed towards kids uh, and for whatever reason, I don't. It's not going to be like this. But the first thing that popped into my mind is: Do you guys remember the Sega Pico? It was that flipbook interactive uh -huh. thing where oh, you yeah. flip the pages and it had like a little touchscreen type thing. Not it was a touchscreen, it was like a touch <laughs> panel. <laughs> it was like for preschoolers, and for whatever reason, that's the first thing that came to my mind. I'm like, oh, could that be what Nintendo's working on? An interactive flipbook or something? I. Don't think they're going to go preschool with this, mainly because, well, older people have to enjoy it as well, but... <laughs> I mean, parents might enjoy the fact that their kids are occupied. That's also a good point. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think it's that. I mean, I think based on how they've worded this, an interactive experience, and they also mentioned... Oh, I forget. Oh, I don't have it up in front of me right now. They said something about crafting, right? That they're crafting interactive experience? Yes, yeah, it's, that's especially crafted. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder if that's also a hint. I have a feeling this is going to be... This isn't going to be a game, I think. This is going to be some kind of, like, Mario... Closer to, like, a Mario Paint. Like, some kind of uh, product where you can design things, I feel like. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what. <laughs> stickers, maybe? Nintendo like stickers, right? <laughs> maybe you can make your own stickers. <laughs> yeah, but they don't have a great track record with stickers. <laughs> well, yeah, not with me for shutting down. Yeah, I think you're on the right um, track, though. Because, like, what Nintendo IPs are made for children. So you think like Mario and Donkey Kong and Pokemon, they're all very um, child-orientated or child-friendly even. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so what does it mean exactly when they say it's for children? Because a lot of their portfolio is specifically designed for them. I'm, I'm picturing a really simple interface designed around making, yeah, making something. I don't know what that is again, but I do think it's... I, I am just picturing something like really simple that allows kids to kind of like explore you know, produce different things. Like, I think Mario Paint actually might be a great analogy here, where mm -hmm. when it came out, it was actually pretty cool because there weren't many other 
products like it. Now, obviously, there's Photoshop, so Mario Paint's completely eclipsed. <laughs> uh, but Photoshop isn't really, you know, it's hard to get used to. It's hard to get into. Um, and now, you know, a Mario Paint-like interface would be incredibly kid-friendly. So I do wonder if it's something kind of like that, you know? I'm kind of thinking it might have some kind of accessory, like Mario Paint, because, you know, Mario Paint had the mouse. Um, kids and the casual audience in general, they love having little um, added value with their products. Like Mario Kart Wii had a plastic wheel, um, Wii Fit had the giant Wii Fit board. I think that kind of added incentive is, is really the key to sort of finding a broader audience. So maybe they will go like the mouse route with Mario Paint, or maybe something else. Um, one thing I'm kind of thinking of is the Joy-Con's IR camera has pretty much never been used. Um, I think it's like 1-2-Switch's sandwich eating thing, and then Resident Evil Revelations. Right. So what if they release some kind of accessories with this, where you can kind of scan in objects into the IR camera, and then they kind of work with the game in that way? So that would be really fascinating like the sort of idea that i was going off with with uh when you guys mentioned mario paint is sort of like expanding upon that idea because obviously kids like making things that's why minecraft is so popular with kids so what about the idea of scanning things in or designing things themselves with this new accessory because i do agree i do think a new accessory is almost has to be involved or at least maybe using the Joy-Con in another way, and maybe just crafting their own worlds, and then they can go into this world and sort of explore it through the Switch. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys on the um, accessory idea. It seems like a lot of people have also latched on to that. Uh, at least in other comments, I've seen some people throwing out su suggestions for an accessory. Uh, that's an interesting idea you had there, John, is something that interacts with you know, the IR camera, whether directly or through an accessory. I could definitely see that being the case, because I, I think this might also be one of the only cases where using the IR camera could make sense for anything. <laughs> um, because, yeah, I was, we as you mentioned, we've barely seen anyone take advantage of it, because I don't think there's a whole lot of use for it. But, hey, maybe Nintendo will prove me wrong here. But I could, if it could function as a type of scanner type thing, I could definitely see that being used for... Well, like, yeah, I mean, I don't know I don't know how impressive the camera is, but maybe you can scan an object and turn it into, like, a 3D version of it in in this game, maybe. Maybe it's like a 3D printer for your Switch. Not actually a 3D printer, but, like, you know, bringing up <laughs> objects that you scan in real life into the game. Like, a 3D uh -huh. scanner, I guess, or um, something along those lines. I have no clue. <laughs> um, but for, if for whatever reason, I am kind of, like, going through my head, like, when I hear the word crafting, I think of maybe, like, uh, like working with wood, perhaps. Um, you know, maybe you can cut figure Nintendo figures out of virtual wood. Like, <laughs> no, it's to, the return of Lincoln logs. <laughs> yeah, well, I used to have I used to have this uh, balsa wood kit as a kid. Like, it came with like a little like saw thing, like a little electric saw. It was like a rubber band or something, <laughs> and you could you could, the, you could push balsa wood through it and like make these little shapes. So, you know, or planes if you want. Like, you put together, like, a little plane they could fly. So, I mm -hmm. wonder if it could be something like that. Maybe something physics-based, even. Maybe you can, like, throw together these... Well, I guess... Here's another example. I don't know if you guys have played um, with the Vive much, but there's this awesome game. I forget what it's called, but you can build these, like, 3D contraptions, and you solve puzzles with these crazy things you can add, like, wheels to. And the idea is you want to make something that can reach the target. So you might have to add, like, on these super long arms, and that the whole thing tipping over... Uh, in order to reach the goal. So maybe something like that. Maybe something like that's goal-oriented, but also relies entirely on you designing something to, to reach that goal. That'd be really cool. I can, and I can see how older fans would also get into that. Not everybody, but somebody could look at that challenge and be like, oh man, I could design this and that and really just let their imaginations run wild. Mm -hmm. So that would make a lot of sense rather than developing a world, just solving problems. Do you think this will involve proper Nintendo characters? Will it be its own whole new thing mm -hmm. along the lines of like Wii Sports or something. I feel like it would be its own new thing because um, Kimishima kind of said um, a statement not too long ago on I think it was on Yahoo. He said something like, um, actually, I actually have the quote here in order to be playable in the long term the second year is crucial. Our task is to add more players including people who have never touched games before. So I don't think you need Mario and Link to appeal to those people who don't generally play games. And if this is aimed at kids, they may not even know these properties. So I think a new IP um, makes a lot of sense here. I hope it's a new IP. That way we can get a new Smash Brothers character out of it, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <maybe. laughs> 
That would be kind of awesome. I'm kind of torn on this. I don't know if it'll be an entirely new IP. I mean, it will be to some extent, no matter what. But I also wonder they might use existing Nintendo characters. Um, one thing that comes to mind immediately is I feel like Pokemon's been in all kinds of kid-focused things. It's like, could this be a Pokemon thing, perhaps? But then I'm, I'm like, well, Pokemon Company will probably announce it themselves if it were Pokemon-based. But then I'm like, well, you know, Mario and Link could be used as some kid-based product too, right? Again, I think back to the Sega Pico, which I think had like, uh, I, I could be misremembering, but I think it had like Sonic-based features even. I think there was like a Sonic book for it, so so they'd incorporate their own characters, or I think there were Disney characters too, um, incorporated mm -hmm. in this new like kid-friendly device. I mean, it, it would make sense, uh, but it is kind of funny how I, I see that attracting more existing uh, Nintendo fans than new Nintendo fans. And I, I almost imagine something kind of like the... Uh, the Badge Arcade Bunny, with just this sort of off-the-wall character that sort of acts as a guide for you, but hopefully is not annoying. I saw some people mentioning Animal Crossing quite a bit. Um, I don't think that's related to this at all, but you think it could be Animal Crossing? We've already seen the branch out with that series quite a bit, including with uh, Amiibo Festival, so... I mean, the uh, I, I think what one of the things that got people talking about that is... Um, one of the developers of multiple Animal Crossing games has retweeted the announcement. Right. So that led fuel to the fire. But we've seen devs retweet Nintendo stuff before and nothing's actually shown up at it. So. That's true. It's possible they could just be on the team for this game. That It doesn't necessarily mean it's Animal Crossing. But speaking of Amiibo, do you think it has anything to do with those? It could. Maybe. I mean, do kids own Amiibo? <laughs> that's a good like question, actually. That's more towards collectors, like older older people. <laughs> I think I think some kids on Amiibo, but um, I mean, I would I would think this would be a new line. But what if it is a way to take advantage of all the Amiibo you have? Like, what if you can scan in your figures in order to you know for this crafting experience, whatever it is, whether stickers or wood, <laughs> and it just pops <laughs> into the game in that form? I mean, it would make sense to just take a take advantage of the functionality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. make them have a little bit more value I mean, they may not be maybe not central to the experience but hey I want this character in there and for the my problem solving and let's put that character in there something like that maybe right this whole thing is just very interesting like the fact that they've announced it like this it really does mean that they are skewing quite different here seemingly like what if they, what if they announce it it's just like a normal game it's like it's just it is just like a new Animal Crossing or something. <laughs> it won't be. But what if it is? It's like, wow, that actually looks really fun for someone our age. You know? Yeah. But yeah. I'm, not, I'm really not getting that sense here. I really do no. think this is going to be like a very light, simple tool for making things. I just don't know what you're yeah. making. That is what that is what I'm stuck on. Like, what are you designing here? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they've distanced themselves too much from like the mini direct. And they've put, put out these statements saying it's for kids. So I think they're trying to say, like, this isn't necessarily for the general audience who watch Directs. Um, and the, the term New Play could mean anything. Yeah. I mean, last generation, New Play led to, like, Nintendogs and brain training and Wii Sports. So this really could just be something we've never seen before, and that's, that's very hard to predict. Mm -hmm. I mean, Miyamoto did make it a, a point of saying that he likes to hire developers that don't necessarily have a background in games because they can come up with new ideas and new concepts. True. So this really could be based on somebody's hobby that they just really enjoyed and that like they offered up this game concept and Nintendo was like, yeah, I think we can do something like that with this. So I think that's what makes it a lot harder to, to predict. Maybe we just need to go mine Miyamoto quotes from the last few years and see what might have inspired this game. Like when he was working <laughs> in his garden and that's how Pikmin came about. Actually, what if this is Pikmin 4? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I think the Pikmin fran How well does the Pikmin franchise appeal to kids? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like, any other possibilities for what this might be. Like I'm trying to think like based on past... Nintendo things like we've seen them like most recently they've been playing you know over the last few years with the idea of like drawing whether in you know Miiverse which is now defunct they brought it back in Splatoon 2 though where you can create your you know your own drawings um they have stickers as they well have... maybe going with the Pico idea maybe you design your own like your own flip books maybe <laughs> like maybe it's like a simple <laughs> animation tool well I mean they've had that Art Academy for a while like even Pokemon Art Academy yeah that's true and again, it doesn't hmm. tie into the whole Mario Paint idea I had, which also had an animation... I was going to call it animation suite. <laughs> Calling it a suite is very <laughs> generous. It's like <laughs> nine panels, you can just paste in whatever. It doesn't have to be animation. <laughs> um, do you think there could be like a social element? Like, can you share your creations with other kids or other people? 
I would I hope so. Yeah, I wonder if they'll just do it locally or online. Um, I think if they're pushing it towards kids, then they may focus on local play. That does seem yeah. like the Nintendo thing to do. I mean, that, you, that could actually be really fun. If it were like a local-based cooperative tool, like we can all work together on the same creative thing, whatever that might be. Hmm. And that yeah, kind of goes hand-in-hand hand with the Switch as well, you know, um, being able to share one Joy-Con and then passing it to another. Uh, I think yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Taking the idea of maybe all of them coming together, put their ideas together, and all going separate to do their own individual tasks. Like, all right, we're starting a business here. <laughs> <laughs> You know what would be really cool is uh, taking the page from the Jackbox Party Pack games. Um, in those, they have this awesome t-shirt mode where like, you take turns drawing shirts. But at the end, you can buy your own shirt, like in real life, and they'll ship it to mm. you. What if they had something like that? Like, if you, whatever thing you're making here, what if you can get like a real life version of that? If it's for kids, I'm guessing it's probably not the case, but wouldn't that be amazing? That would um, be super cool. Like, especially, <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, take that back. For kids, that could be amazing. Because you're oh, yeah. like as an adult or as a parent, you could buy this thing. And be like, hey kid, <laughs> that's how you refer to your kids, right? Hey kid, <laughs> here's the thing you made <laughs> in real life. Andre, Andre's the perfect parent. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I can see that being pretty cool. Like a kid being very like they, they love to show off what they make, and if you can actually buy something and they 3D print it, like you said, Andre, ship it out to you. Yeah, that'd be cool. I, I do feel like things have to be physical with children because obviously they don't have access to credit cards. Right. So I reckon this mm. is going to be a full retail game and not really with any kind of downloadable content. I think a lot of it's going to be physical, like physical add-ons, accessories. Um, but yeah, as, as you said, we really don't know what it could be. Um, may maybe they have like some kind of like Darama set where you can um, put toys in and scan them or something like that. Uh, you you actually are reminding me of uh, God. My my friend has this cute little robot. I forgot what it's called. It comes with this cube type thing, and he this robot actually like, moves around and interacts with the cube, and you can play little games with him. So this is, this reminds me of two things. One, what if this is a comeback of Rob? This is Rob's big comeback <laughs> right here. You got, like a little Rob mini that comes with this thing. But um, no, actually the, the cube idea that reminded me, and you talk about scanning things. Like what if it actually does come with like these different like. Uh, like shapes, I guess. Like maybe, maybe it has its own cube that you, has different icons on the side, and you can interact with that with the IR scanner. So you know, maybe it has a few of these different little, little things you can scan in, um, and maybe you can create. Like, what if you could create like these little virtual environments using these shapes? It might come with, based on nothing, by the way, <laughs> that you scan <laughs> in, and like that's then represented in the game, and the way you manipulate those shapes affects what's happening in the game. It's all done through the IR scanner. It could be. I mean, I have to imagine also HD Rumble would have a big f factor in this. Mm. Especially uh, if you're woodcutting. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you're woodcutting. I mean, the whole they did they made a whole point of that be, being able to shake a glass and be able to fill the multiple I ice cubes within that glass. So it would make sense to have some sort of tactile feedback when you're it crafting something. It would make sense if it's wood. And oh, that's, that's the second feature the Switch <laughs> isn't really using, you know, the IR camera and HD Rumble. So we got to see them at some point. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty tapped on ideas. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have any other like last minute suggestions you want to throw out there? Um, not personally. I, I mean, I think we're all very much of the idea that it has to be some sort of accessory and yeah. creating something. What that exactly is, that's where we're kind of running into a wall. <laughs> well, uh -huh. there's, I mean, the sky's the limit, right? Like, it could be anything. Mm. It could literally be anything. Oh. I mean, it's, it's not Metroid Prime 4, it's not Bayonetta 3, and it's not Virtual Console. Let me amend that. It could be literally anything except for anything most of us are going to be excited for. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's my, that's the thing I'm most excited for, that we're looking forward to, <laughs> is the massive fallout that's going to come from this. I think I think people, yeah. I, I feel like already people are going to be look, going into with this with expectations too high, even though Nintendo's already put out the message out there that's probably not for you. I feel like people are still going to find ways to be disappointed in this somehow. Yeah, they I've will. seen. <laughs> yeah, I've seen far too many suggestions being like, "Oh, this has to be Virtual Console." Oh, this has to be the no, online this, network. There's like, no way the Virtual Console. There's no freaking way. I love the Virtual Console. I want it. There is no way that's what they're going to use to appeal to kids. I, I do get like I kind of get why people are maybe are taking the angle because they think it's for old, you know, for younger gamers and older perhaps because when you know Virtual Console appealed. When those games came out, we were all younger for the most part, and now it would appeal to us too as older people as well. But that's totally not what they're doing here. <laughs> I mean, they're saying yeah. new play. That that can't mean playing old games. Yeah, <laughs> agreed. 
So, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, this is kind of exciting, just in that we literally have no idea. Like, how often is this the case where we have no freaking clue what it could be? <laughs> so I'm excited on that, from that perspective, even if it may not be something that appeals to me. Like, I'm curious to know what it is, and anything that expands the Switch's demographic is only a good thing, really. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just curious to see what Nintendo's doing here. Like, we've seen them talk about expanding the audience for quite a while now. They've been talking about this since... I think since even before the Switch launched. I mean, of course, you go way back to the Wii when they first started talking about it, but... Oh, man, it's the Vitality Sensor. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's coming back. <laughs> it's finally here. <laughs> well, you know what? I think the Vitality Sensor was IR-based, so maybe they found some way to do that with the IR camera. <laughs> oh my there God. you go. Yep, that's it. Oh, man. But, yeah, if they... I mean, they, they've talked about how they're catching up to the Wii audience uh, or want to catch up to the Wii audience, and if they can find some way to appeal to that Wii Sports crowd. Not a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's going to be that broad, though. Like, Wii Sports was a huge reach. It had a huge reach. I don't think we're going to see that with this, at least mm -hmm. not in terms of age age groups. I could yeah. be wrong. Maybe I am. But I really am thinking this is going to be more younger-focused. Like, despite them saying, you know, for the kids of heart, like, you, like even... Like, even Disneyland, I wouldn't describe that way. I wouldn't say, like, oh, it's great for kids and those are kids of heart. I mean, th that's true, but I think that's also selling a short, right? So Yeah, uh, same I sort of way as Legos. I think there is a Wii Sports potential, maybe, because, you know, Wii Sports was so successful because everybody knows tennis and golf and baseball. Um, if, if this is toy-orientated, then maybe that instant appeal is already there. But then again, we don't, we don't know that exactly. It could be anything. I don't know. We'll see in just a few hours. Literally, in a few hours, we will know. And that's, uh, that's kind of cool. So, hey, but I hope, you know, I hope it's something that doesn't surprise me or interest me. So, I mean, it will surprise me no matter what. I hope it's something that doesn't interest <laughs> me. All right, guys, any final thoughts you want to get out there before we wrap it up? I think I'm, I'm tapped. <laughs> yeah, John, me too. You're tapped? Could this be the return of Let's Tap from the Wii? Oh, maybe. <laughs> oh, man. A cardboard box <laughs> comes with your comes with your game? <laughs> That's how you're going to bring in the kids. Yep. <laughs> we figured it out, guys. We cracked the code. All there right. There go. I think we're done here. <laughs> John, do you want to tell people where they can find you at? Yep, they can find me on Twitter at Nomcoms. And I'm also putting something together with Nintendo. Uh, and we will be announcing that fairly soon. So just stay tuned on, on the Twitter. And, yeah, that's me. And well, you guys also have that podcast too. You often, oh yeah, on, right? yeah, that's true. We do the eShop Action Committee, where every two weeks we talk about uh, all the the huge amounts of releases that come out on the eShop. So we try and play through most of them for you. Wow, I don't know how you can keep up with that. That's uh, pretty <laughs> yeah, impressive, <seriously>. actually. <laughs> well, you can find links to all those in the description below, and of course, stay tuned. The game is playing for lots more on whatever this announcement ends up being, and everything Nintendo as well. Catch you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>